The second structural design pattern that we would be talking about is the decorative pattern. In the decorative pattern, we would add responsibilities to objects dynamically. What does that really mean? Typically in the object-oriented programming, we use a lot of inheritance. Let's say I have 10 types of pizzas. So pizza type 1, pizza type 2 to pizza type 10. And now there is a new requirement. I need to make these 10 types available with three different types of toppings. I would want pizza type 1 with topping 1, pizza type 2 with topping 2, pizza type 3 with topping 3. I already have 10 types. So if I add three of each for these 10 types, then I would have 30 different classes to manage. This is, I mean, inheritance is kind of a static relationship. So instead of doing this, can we make it dynamic? Can we add the topping on top of an existing pizza? So you have a pizza and kind of use the topping as a decorator on top of it. So that's the concept behind the decorator design pattern. So instead of creating multiple types of the same object again and again, can we add the additional responsibilities dynamically as kind of a topping? A good example would be also adding a discount and an order. I already have an order and I would want to add different kinds of discounts on top of the order. For example, in India we have this thing called Paytm and they have a lot of discount offers. I mean, if I keep adding different types for each of the discount, I would have hundreds of classes to maintain. So what they really do would they would, would be to add the discount as a decorator on top of the existing order. A very good example of decorator pattern in Java is the Java I.O. So the way we create the input streams. So I have a file input stream. If I want to make it buffered, I would need to create it as buffered input stream and pass the file input stream as a constructor argument. If I want to read it in lines, I mean, if I want to add a line number on top of it, the way I would need to do it is line number input stream and pass the buffered input stream as input to it. So this is how things are in Java IO. This is the implementation of the decorator pattern. You can actually look up the code for line number in put stream to see how decorator pattern is implemented in there. The thing about the decorator pattern is it helps in adding runtime behavior. So you are adding behavior at runtime. So the user of the interface can decide how he wants to create the objects. But that's also the complexity. So somebody who needs to use the decorator pattern needs to understand the different structures which are present. So it will not be a simple create pizza type one topping three. It would not be as simple as that. So it, there would be a little bit more complexity to it. So there would be a little bit of complexity in creating the objects. That's the disadvantage of the decorator pattern. So basically the decorator pattern is all about adding responsibilities dynamically. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.